Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand clap. Give him a big hand clap to the glory of his name. Abundant life, good evening everybody. It's truly my joy and my honor to be here. And um, I consider it a great privilege. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Please, let me request everyone to stand. And I want you to help me honor our mother, Mommy Janet. God bless you. God bless you. This is the best you can do. Let's honor her, a matriarch indeed. Amen. I, I met her the first time when I came to preach for Pastor Shola. And um, I think she just had a brief charge. And I said, wow, this is a mighty woman of God. Truly a mighty woman of God. Amen. And when we drove in here and I looked at the beautiful facility and everything, I said, no. The hand of God is truly, truly in this place. God bless you, ma. We honor you in Jesus' name. In a similar vein, help me honor the entire pastorate, the eldership of this great ministry. Thank you. I honor you, every single man and woman of God. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I believe that God is going to be speaking to us tonight. And I believe that our lives will never be the same. Who is ready to receive tonight? Would you lift those hands and cry unto God for a visitation tonight? Father, give me an encounter. Go ahead and pray. Father, give me an encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ, give me an encounter. change my life let your word come with power let it transform me the bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple someone is praying Jesus name we pray father we thank you for the abundance of your presence your wisdom your power in this place thank you for the honor of bringing your word your life to your people I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this session will be most impactful and that everyone under the sound of my voice including those who are following from across the globe that they will be mightily impacted by tonight's session and to Jesus be all the glory amen and amen please give Jesus a big hand clap and you may be seated you may be seated you may be seated Jesus said the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. John chapter 10 and verse 10, he says, But I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly. He came to give us life and that we have that life more abundantly. Before I forget, I want to salute the woman of God and this ministry I understand it is 40 years of impact by the Spirit. Can we give Jesus a big hand clap? 40 years. And I truly believe that if Christ tarries for the next 40 years, this ministry will only go from glory to glory. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Then he says, in old age, they will still be fat 
and flourishing. May this be the prophetic word for this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. That as your days are, so shall your strength be. Is someone receiving it as a prophetic word? I say it again, that as your days are, so shall your strength be. The older you get, the greater you become too. You will never have a better yesterday. I say it over your life, you will never have a better yesterday. For the Bible declares that the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter, more and more. I prophesy more and more over your life, more and more over your children, more and more over your career, more and more over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for someone, let me declare over you that though your beginning be small, in this season, may God, who is the lifter of men, may he lift you beyond your background. May he lift you. The one who lifted Esther, may he lift you. The one who exalted Ruth, may he lift you. The one who lifted Gideon, may he lift you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that when the Lord turns again your captivity, it will be like a dream. That even the heathen will say the Lord has done great things for us. It says the Lord has done great things for us. In whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivities like the streams of the Negev. Anyone here who has had to cry from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, now October. I decree and declare you will end the year with praise. You will end the year with praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, all the ocean roll to the King of Kings. We will praise our from the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day. of the earth, all the elders and the saints, amen. I want to share with you very briefly, and I hope and pray that we'll have a bit of time to pray before my session is done, as a contribution to what God is doing all through this conference, your honor to have great fathers of faith who will be standing upon this altar and be speaking over your life it's impossible that you remain the same after this conference in the name of Jesus Christ two scriptures and I'll begin to teach Acts chapter 26 please and verse 22 Acts chapter 26 and verse 22 I want to share with you a mystery very briefly this is the mystery that has been responsible for longevity of impact. Now for a foundation, God desires not only that we succeed, God desires not only that we advance, but he desires that we last. Are we together now? The challenge with many believers is that we start well, but we have not mastered the technology that causes men to remain. And so people rise, people do well, people excel, and then at some point in their lives, they seem to plateau, and then they begin to decline. But the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light in ministry, in destiny, in career. It should be as a shining light that shineth more and more. In fact, the Bible says it this way, better is the end of a matter 
than the beginning thereof. Am I right on that? That means God is always concerned about the latter part of things. It should never be that we begin well in ministry. We begin well in destiny. We begin well in family. We begin well in career. And then we plunge and become in a sorry state. Unfortunately, this seems to be the lot of many believers. They start well with vibrancy, spiritually speaking. They start well with vibrancy, career-wise. And then at some point in their lives, for whatever reason, they seem to plateau. They don't go down, but they don't go up again. Then they get to a point where they begin to go down until they look worse than the state they were when they started. The Bible is full of people who finish well. Exceptional people who ran their race and finished well. The Bible is also full of people who unfortunately did not finish well. I don't want to go through the, the story of people who did not end well in Scripture. But I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus Christ you will end well. That your life will become an inspiration to those who are coming after you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to the book of Acts. And I'll establish a few things and then we pray. Chapter 26 of Acts and verse 22. Do we have it projected? Okay, so I'll read it from here and then um, you'll follow carefully. It says, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses says should come. I'm interested in the A part. Just keep verse 22. It says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. I continue. That means God has to help and assist a man to continue and remain. God has to help a man to have longevity of impact in life, longevity of impact in ministry. If a man does not obtain help of God, regardless how zealous, regardless how well-intentioned, I can tell you by the mercies of God, even in this work of the ministry, I have seen people with solid character. I've seen people with integrity. But for whatever reason, they did not obtain the requisite help from God. And they still felt like people who were full of compromise. I have seen a mystery in my life as a man of God that under a certain condition, it seems like both good and bad experience the same result. The difference is the help of God over the life of a man. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, it says they labor but they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. Are we learning tonight? It says the watchman watcheth but in vain. It is vain, it says, to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But it says God giveth his beloved sleep. That if God does not help a man, there are times that your intelligence can fail. If God does not help a man, human connections are important, but human connections can be limited. If God does not help a man, you can have money, but you will be surprised at how many things money cannot do. If God does not help a man, you can have a good sermon and not have anyone interested in listening to you. If God does not help a man, you can be a man of character, but those who have the grace to help you will not even see you. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Who is learning already? Because we live in a world where we live in a celebrity age where people like to take the credit for the exploits they like to take the credit for the many things that happen around their lives there is such an obsession to be a celebrity there is such an obsession to be exceptional and there's nothing wrong in itself with that except that you get to a point in your life where you can believe 
that the results that you have now produced have come as a result of the vastness of your prayer life the vastness of your word study life because of the accolades that follow you academically in as much as those things are not wrong there is a life that powers those things to work it is called the help of god that without the help of god you can be as sound intellectually as you can be you will still fail in life without the help of god you can be skilled and gifted you will still be ignored without the help of god you can be a man of god fast in scripture and you will be surprised that your life will not go forward you will be surprised that ministry will not go forward there are parents who raise their children in a way that no child should be um, a tragedy after that kind of training. And yet almost all the children turn out to be a source of pain. It was not lack of discipline. And I've seen other people who did not make any investment in their children. And God meandered those children to ministries that midwife their training. It is not of him that willeth. You are Ebenezer, the helper of men. You are Ebenezer. Behind the exploits of men, exploits in ministry, behind the exploits of men, exploits in the area of influence, finances, and so on and so forth, I am telling you that there are laws to be obeyed. There are principles to be kept. I agree. But when all is said and done, there is a part of the equation of success that no man can feel. It is only the help of God that becomes the completer of that equation. Hallelujah. I would always say that there are times when you desire to catch fish as a fisherman. If you want to catch fish as a fisherman, the right place to be is the sea. The right tool to use is your net and the boat. But Peter in John chapter 21, being a professional fisherman, had experience correct. Had the boat correct. Had the net correct. Was at the right location correct. But he did not catch fish. There are times all the variables are right and mysteriously you will not know why things are not working it looks to me like sometimes god allows those things to happen deliberately to remind you that he is beyond a principle to remind you that he is beyond a formula principles are powerful but there is an agency beyond them are we learning haven't obtained help from the lord i continue ministry to this day I continue career to this day. We live in a world where we are embarrassed to declare before the nations that God is the reason behind our results. We like to take credit for the things that God wrought through us and sometimes in doing so, we push God out of the space because we make him look like he's a nuisance. We, this celebrity mentality puts us in a position where we want to receive the accolades. If there is anything I have learned about God is that when you stand his way of receiving glory, even if he's the one that blesses you or has blessed you to that position, he will fight you. God can fight something he once gave you because of the way you and that thing has interrupted him from being seen just because God gave you something does not mean it cannot become his enemy the enemy of God is anyone and anything that perpetually becomes an interruption to his being glorified that can be your gift that can even be your church God can fight good things he does not only fight evil God can fight good things if they become an interruption to his being glorified he will fight it let me tell you the truth. There are many people's decline in life that is not entirely demonic. They made up their minds to take the place of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, he began to caution the nation of Israel and he says, let it not be that when you have built houses 
let it not be that when all of these wonderful things have happened you will say in your heart my power and the might of my hand has gotten me these riches then it says thou shall remember the Lord your God you see look at me beloved something happens to believers when we step into the realm of success it makes a lot of sense to seek God when you are failing it makes a lot of sense to cry and fast and pray when things are not working it makes a lot of sense to give when you are hoping that you will rise but there is a weakness in men please follow carefully we're going somewhere there is a weakness in men when they step into a realm of results something happens to them the Bible says they can forget they do not forget because they are evil they forget because they are human hallelujah it is easy to make all kinds of vows and covenants with God Lord if you lift me I promise that the nations will see me if you prosper me prosper my children make all things to work well for me but something there there seems to be a weakness in all men that if God does not help you to tame that weakness it can cut short your impact so when men begin to rise, when convenience begins to come into your life, when God begins to give you a name, as a man of God, when God multiplies your voice, amplifies your impact, gradually, it's a subtle indoctrination. It doesn't happen in one day. It's a programming. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a seduction that happens to you. You begin to convince yourself that honestly, without me, God's program cannot go forward. You begin to convince yourself. It is at that point you become an enemy of God. Because if there is anything I know about God, He's passionate about being revealed and glorified in the world of men. And if anyone becomes an interruption to that agenda, I assure you, you become an enemy of the cross. Are we together? So to remind you that if you celebrate 40 years of impact and you watch a matriarch like our mother still walking in humility and giving God praise after 40 years, it is worthy of commendation. There are people who cannot last two years of experiencing results. It becomes a cost to them. The reason why God does not seem to answer the prayer of many people is not because his hands cannot be stretched. You have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that lifting you will become a cost to you. So he will rather peg your growth until he prunes the tendencies of pride, until he prunes the tendencies of taking his place. Who is learning tonight? It is true. Let me tell you this. As a secret by the message of God, I understand a few things about prayer every time you pray on an issue again and again and you bind you cast you do everything people agree with you and that situation does not change it is not demonic again there is something in you that needs to be corrected for the answer maybe this is a word for someone you have given you did not increase you were diligent you did not increase oil was laid on you hands were laid on you stop casting the devil go back to God and say walk on me that weakness you are taming by my delay walk on me so that it will give me liberty are we together it is true it is God that knows the tendencies that are enshrined within our hearts and he must there is a posture that a believer must carry perpetually to last now I show you a secret and then we'll pray I want to show you one of the ways that God helps men the psalmist said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he says from whence cometh my help he says my help not our help I don't know where yours comes from but my help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth let me show you a mystery this mystery has been responsible for the longevity of many people in ministry in business in career 
and I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes that you will engage this mystery for your profiting and that for the rest of your life you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. Isaiah chapter 40 please let's go to verse 28 we're doing three verses Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28 the Bible starts by saying, Has thou not known, and has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, pay attention now, he's talking about God, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not. Take note now. He's introducing the subject of weariness, but he's saying in discussing that subject, let us settle it first and foremost that there is one who is exempted from that limitation by reason of who he is. I'm about to talk about a subject, but he's saying so that you do not think it's a weakness that befalls all men, that God is exempted from this limitation. He fainted not, neither is weary. He says there is no searching of his understanding. So he expects you to get that as a preamble now that you understand that God is not weak and does not faint, he tells you something about the world of men. Verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. So there is hope for everyone who faints. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Is someone learning tonight? Then he introduces something that is a weakness to all men. It doesn't matter who you are. Once you find yourself in flesh and blood, this weakness will eventually catch up with you if you do not know how to circumvent your way above it. The weakness is in verse 30. Even the youth shall faint, not may faint, shall faint. It's not a cause. He's revealing something that was programmed with the fallen nature, that, that it, is, it is part and parcel of the human nature. The youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. He talks of fainting. He talks of weariness. Verse 30, please back up to verse 30 again. Fainting, weariness, and even falling. But then he tells us there is a way out. But they not but all but they not everyone will be interested in engaging this mystery but they that wait upon the lord the bible says a few things will begin to happen to those day that they will renew their strength that even though they are human and based on the law that limits human nature they should fall they should faint but that they have found a system in the spirit that causes them to mount up with wings as the eagles that they shall run and when you are expecting them to be exhausted as all humans should be by a mystery that God is revealing here you will never find them exhausted that they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint if that looks like you shout a loud amen it means that in as much as we are humans, in as much as we are limited by this frame called the body, the Bible says you can outsource intelligence and engage a mystery that even after 30 years you will still be standing in ministry, standing in business. When others are falling like a pack of cards, even though you are human, God-like results will be manifested through your life. And that when men ask you, don't you get tired? Don't you get exhausted? You will tell them, I'm in every way human. But I have found out that they that wait upon the Lord, something happens to them. Remember the Bible says, if you fall or faint or turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is a strength problem. That every time you are afraid of moving forward, if anything affects your continuity, it is a strength problem. And the Bible says it is human to gas out. It is human to lose strength for various reasons. 
the enmity and the wickedness of men is enough to exhaust you in this life that the fact that you are making progress men can be used by the devil and they can become blockades to your moving forward why are you the only one rising in this office why are you the only one rising daniel you are not the only one in babylon let's let's probe the reason why daniel does not seem to be exhausted and a whole parliament sat down to discuss a matter so it affects one man so the man cannot continue there are many reasons why we are weak there are many reasons why we faint one of it is because of the reality of the world that we live in the bible says our world is surrounded with evil that the whole world lieth in wickedness you don't have to look for anyone's trouble once you are born and once God begins to show you mercy it is enough to attract antagonism from everywhere is it only your children who will rise and be shining is it only you who will be rising men for you what was the crime of Jesus that he was hated by the scribes and the Pharisees you would think that if they really loved men they should be happy about someone who would be executing their agenda but they were angry you know the source of their anger that the whole city's attention had been turned to Jesus and they said let's do something about this man it first started as subtle antagonism until they got to a point where they wanted him to die so hard they were willing to bring out a terrorist and release that terrorist back into town provided it to help Jesus die let me tell you the truth there's something about the world of men when you succeed consistently it can attract envy it can attract jealousy it can attract antagonism and because you are human there is only so much you can fight in the flesh one day you become exhausted is the reason why people commit suicide is the reason why people get angry is the reason why many fold their boots in ministry and say you know what I'm tired of all this trouble as a man of God you know what it means to begin a work and then you labor you labor you push all kinds of betrayals all kinds of disappointment here after 10 15 20 years you feel like wrapping it up in ministry even the youth shall faint. The signature of a young man is his strength. He says, I write to you young men because you are strong. And yet in spite of that human strength, people can be exhausted. There are people today who are due for promotion, but simply because of some kinds of sentiments, their promotions can be pegged for a very long time. And let me tell you, as humans, you can become exhausted. One of the most comforting scripture in the Bible is John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. Life wept. Strength wept. Vision wept. Faith wept. God wept. He never cried as God. But when he became a man, he wept. There are two reasons according to scripture why Jesus wept. The first was love and compassion. In fact, all were love and compassion. But the scenario was different. John 11, he was standing in front of Lazarus' tomb and he wept. And the Bible says, they said, oh, how he loved him. The second time Jesus wept, he looked over Jerusalem and saw people moving like sheep without shepherd. And the Bible says he wept and lifted up his voice and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only you had known in this day the things that pertain unto your peace. He says, but they are hidden from you. Jesus wept because of compassion. He also wept because of the ignorance of men. Let me show you people in the Bible who were weary. There was a man called Abraham, the one who would become the patriarch. Are we together now? Abraham became weary because he waited for years, waited for a child. Sarah became weary. And at a point, Abraham, I'm sure that Abraham had just given up and said, God, you know what? Use somebody in my house to raise me a child. And God said, no, you will have your own child from you. 
Let me show you another man who was exhausted in scripture. A man who laid down for 38 years at a pool called Bethesda. One of the few men who the Bible records the longevity of their pain. I'm sure by the first year when the man got there, he took for granted that by maybe one or two years, I will be out of this place. Two years in pain became five years, became a decade, became 15 years, became 20 years. I'm sure someone encouraged him and said, don't worry, this year for sure, you will be out. 25 became 30, 30 became 35, 36, 37, 38. When Jesus came to him and said, why are you in this condition? The man said, don't, don't waste my time. Listen, um, I've been in this condition for a long time. How about the woman with the issue of blood? One of the synoptic accounts tell us that Jesus was on his way to go and heal the centurion's daughter. Remember? She was 12 years of age and she was about to die. And while he was on his way going, there was a woman who was also 12 years. That means the day that young girl who died was born, that was the day this woman's problem too started. They were all 12 years. One was about to lose his daughter. The other was saying, listen, it is an issue of my health. There are times that people go through pain. There are times that people go through tragic situations. There are times that people go through unfavorable situations. But let's look at a few things and then we'll pray. If God is helping you and speaking to you, shout a loud amen. amen. So the first information we get from Isaiah 40, and please pay attention now. The strategy that helps you to obtain help, giving you longevity in life, that even though you are human, you are able to conquer the limitations of weariness, the limitations of fatigue, the limitations of exhaustion, and you continue until you finish your race. You will finish strong. I prophesy to someone you will finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. So number one, the first information we learn from that scripture, Isaiah 40, is that God does not faint and God is not weary, not as God. When he became a man in Christ, he was tired. Jesus slept because he was tired. Jesus was hungry. He was exhausted. All of these human limitations were very evident in the life of Jesus when he became a man. But as God, the Bible says God does not faint. It is hopeful for us to know that. Scripture puts it in a very beautiful way. That the keeper of Israel, that he does not sleep, he does not slumber. Isn't that amazing? There is no exhaustion with God. Number two, the Bible gives us an information that whoever faints needs power. When you find yourself fainting emotionally, fainting spiritually, fainting in, in every area of your life, what you are in need of is power. And that whoever has no might, what God does to such a one, is to increase strength then he tells us that all men even the youth and the young men will faint and be weary and even utterly fall fall in ministry fall in life fall in destiny fall in career but then he says 31 they that wait upon the Lord someone shout I will wait one more time, say, I will wait. They that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says they shall renew their strength. Now, what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Seeing then that strength, renewal, revitalization is connected to this mystery. That means the mystery of sustainable impact, void of weariness, void of exhaustion, that as the years come, so your energy is sustained and multiplied. The Bible says the mystery that controls that kind of outcome in a believer is called waiting upon the Lord. What does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Waiting upon the Lord is beyond prayer and fasting. Most times when we say, I am waiting upon the Lord, we say that to mean I'm on a fast. And while there is an expression of that there, 
waiting upon the Lord uh, is, is way beyond just prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. I'll give you three definitions and then we'll pray. Number one, to wait upon the Lord means to look unto Jesus. It is a description of total dependence, a state of total dependence. Waiting upon the Lord, number one, suggests having this consciousness that if God does not help me, if God does not open a door for me, if God does not become an anchor and strength and help for me, by the strength of the flesh, I will not be able to do much. Waiting upon the Lord is beyond just praying and fasting. It starts with an orientation. Is someone learning now? You are waiting upon the Lord when you, number one, sustain this orientation that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed and that by the strength of the flesh, no matter how dexterous and no matter how competent you are, eventually you will gas out, eventually you will be weary. Someone say, I will wait. I will wait means that I declare in advance that I am helpless outside of the help of God. I declare in advance that my education, as important as it is, has limitations in the world of men. That my skill, my expertise, my knowledge, are we together now? Everything that constitutes an advantage in my life will eventually be frail. They that wait upon the Lord. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Don't sing, just listen to what I'm singing. This is what it means to wait. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Listen, if you can turn this song to a mentality, then you have learned how to wait. It is beyond a special number. It is an orientation you must carry for the rest of your life. I look unto you like a maid looks unto her mistress for help. Lord, if you do not help me, I cannot go beyond this place. Some trust in horses and others trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. It is one of the things that I learned very early in ministry. That the strength of men eventually fails them. Even warriors run under a certain condition. They run away from battle. The nation of Israel having warriors... They got to a point where Goliath of God stood before them and he said, King Saul, bring me a man to fight me. Every day he kept coming and the Bible says their strength failed them. The warriors were afraid. There are things that confront you in this life that even if you are Elijah, you will run away to hide. So I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. That's what it means to wait, number one. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Apostle. My own challenge is that I need $30,000, $50,000 to go and continue my postgraduate abroad. I don't have a father, I don't have a mother. Yet every time I go to bed, I see myself as a PhD holder. I see myself as a professor from one of the Ivy League universities, colleges abroad. How is this going to happen? Let me tell you, they looked unto him, my Bible says, and their faces were lightened. Provided you can look beyond your pain. Peter, if you keep looking at the sea, you will sink. But if you look onto Jesus, one step after the other, you will find out that you are able to walk on water. 
We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we. That if we call our mother out and tell her, please tell us the story, the journey of this ministry. She will tell you that there were times that she stood and said, God, you are my only help. If you do not lead me, I have nowhere to go. There is something I know about God. He likes the sound of surrender and dependence. He likes the sound of surrender and dependence. Hallelujah. My dear friend and brother is here, Pastor Shola. We were talking about it this morning. He woke up like every other preacher, happy to start a conference. And had even done videos inviting people. And about a few hours to the conference, the entire church was gutted by fire. Not a single chair was taken out of it. I'm sure, I'm sure you all saw it. There is something about God when you know, ba, even when you cry, you will still say, I know that there is an end to this. That your tears will no longer be tears of hopelessness. You will cry because you are human, but you will still be singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as the tears come. Ah, you, you, you know that though he slay me, yet will I trust him that all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. While the promise is still coming, I will wait. I will wait as I believe him. I have not seen my dreams and visions come to pass. Lord, I know what you told me last year. I know what you told me in January. I know I, I thought by now that certain things would have happened in your life, in my life. But even now, I still wait upon you. I look unto you. Because thou art the fountain of life. It is in your life that we see light. Someone lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Father, the grace to look unto you, the grace to depend on you. Someone is praying. A serious believer is praying. I look unto you. I may cry, but I will wait on you. I may weep, but I will wait on you. It may tell on my human nature, but I will wait. It pays to wait. It pays to look unto Jesus. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Apostle Paul began to teach us in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. Here's what he says. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. Then he says to run with patience or with perseverance the race that is set before us. I like verse 2. Looking on to Jesus. This is how to run such that you win. Looking on to Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. That he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And is today set at the right hand of God. Can I tell you something? no matter what you are going through today hear it from me it has an end the bible says surely there is an end there is absolutely nothing that is new under the sun let me speak a word of hope for someone the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that is to come there is nothing new under the sun rent issue it is not new looking for the fruit of the womb it is not new looking for a spouse it is not new weeping over someone who has transited it is not new trusting god to pay your rent it is not new trusting god to own your home it is not new trusting god to be a graduate is not new everything that you see that you desire has happened to someone before and the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise you are not the first to start ministry 
you are not the first to desire longevity in ministry you are not the first to desire the fruit of the womb you are not the first to desire a spouse you are not the first to desire a job it has happened before and there were people who triumphed over it it says hear my cry O lord attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth will i call unto you that when my heart is overwhelmed it says lead me to the rock there is a rock that is higher than i that rock is jesus that rock is jesus that when men look unto him their faces become lighted please be seated so waiting upon the Lord number one refers to an orientation a mentality of total dependence you can fast and pray but not with a mentality that knows that if God does not help me I cannot go further you did not wait upon the Lord waiting upon the Lord does not start with an activity it starts with an orientation an orientation an orientation God if you do not help me there is no way out total dependence I like how Proverbs chapter 3 puts it from verse 5 to 7 here's what it says trust in the Lord abundant life hear me trust in the Lord the Bible says with all your heart it says and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways how many in all your ways acknowledge him the word acknowledge is a very important word. Acknowledge does not mean to recognize him. To place so much priority on him that he knows that without him you cannot move further. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. But they that wait upon the Lord is a mysterious strategy that has bailed many weak people out of life's vicissitudes hallelujah still speaking about pastor shola you need to go back and take a visit in that church and you will know that god reigns over the affairs of men i believe that god used that event to speak a message to the body of christ that it doesn't matter where you find yourself regretting over where you are will not solve the problem but he told Abraham he said lift up your eyes even you if your feet cannot get there your eyes can go there lift up your eyes from where you are not where you want to be from where thou art take your eyes northward southward eastward westward he said as far as your eyes can see I have given unto you as an inheritance hallelujah to look on to Jesus to have an orientation that my entire life's journey depends on the supply of grace and help that comes from him is the first thing the Bible refers to as waiting upon the Lord number two what does it mean to wait upon the Lord are you ready to wait upon the Lord means that you wait for instructions that give you victory per season to wait upon the Lord is beyond just a mentality of dependence it means to wait for instructions every time you are stuck and you are around a season that does not seem to open up for you when you stay you don't just stay as a mentality alone you stay to receive instructions because when the word of the Lord comes, it comes as a key that can open you up to the next season. Shall I pursue? It says pursue, overtake, and without fail, recover all. Many people wait upon the Lord, but they do not stay until he speaks. When you wait upon the Lord, your trigger to leaving that place is when his voice comes. Can I tell you, God speaks but he's not always speaking you were created in his image you speak but you are not always speaking God speaks but he's not always speaking the Bible will say on the fifth year on the fifth day of the tenth month the word of the Lord came your assignment is to stay until the word comes 
father should i stay in nigeria or should i go to uk or should i go to canada what is the next what is the next 10 years of my life like can i tell you this when god is silent don't be in a hurry to suggest what he's saying because the silence of God is also a language. You must know how to interpret the silence of God. This is where Satan will slip into your desperation and tell you things that sound like God. He can appear as an angel of light. Hmm. Is someone learning? An angel of light. And there are times you can hear things and think it is God, whereas it is not God. Wait, Father, what is the next level, the next season in ministry? And you literally shut down. Let me tell you this. The process of waiting makes you look like a fool for a long time until his word comes. But with the word of the Lord comes acceleration. Acceleration. God can tell you, wait. You're a man of God. Lord, when do I start ministry? I'm ready. And he says, wait. And for a long time, you will look like a fool. What are we doing, oh God? And then one day, his word comes. And with that word comes the empowerment for the season. Someone just gives you a call and says, the Lord instructed me to hold your hands financially. You see, when you don't hear God, no boat, but there was an ability. And he got up and began to walk on water. And within a short time, he had caught up with them. They looked at him and thought he was a ghost. I said, Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. Peter, I want to teach you that boat is not the only way to go to the other side. You can wait. There are many ways to transport yourself. The usual is to use a boat. But when the boat fails, there is something you can get in the place of waiting. The word of God is also a vehicle. It can transport you. That the same thing a boat can do, the word of God can do. The same thing a job can do, the word of God can do. The same thing men can do, the word of God can do. That was the essence of that miracle. It was not just about working on water. It was to show you the various ways you can arrive to the other side. That sometimes it is a boat, but there are times that you are already delayed. The boat has gone ahead of you. Find hope, you can still walk on water. Yes, sir. Apostle, my boat left since 2020 and it may never return. Your boat can be time and time has gone ahead of you. And as it is right now, that boat does not look like it will return back. There is another agency to help you. I will restore the years. God can bring his word the word of God can become anything that you lost and give you an edge in life. Who is learning tonight? Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, the boat can go. But when the boat leaves, make sure the word is with you. And that word, you wait until it comes. But when it comes, when it comes, when it comes, you will get up and begin to walk. And some of you in one year, you will catch up as though you started. I know that for 10 years after graduation, you did not get a job. I understand. If you were working by now, you would have attained a certain... I'm not teaching you to be lazy. I'm not teaching... There are ways life was designed to work. But I'm saying based on the reality in our world, there are times that the boat goes ahead of you. But make sure when the boat goes ahead of you, turn and wait. Don't just lament and sit there. If you lament and sit there, no word will come to you. But when you wait, his word comes. His word comes. His word comes. His word comes. I started ministry in Zaria, the northern part of this nation. And one time, when my season there was over, I began to sense in my heart that the season was over. But where I was going to move to, I did not know. I just knew that it was over. Do you know, when you get to these prophetic junctions, be careful. 
you can lose efficiency of 10 years by one carelessness prophetic junctions are delicate moments in the life of everyone you can do well for 10 years and one wrong decision will rubbish your testimony because you did not see well are we together now I knew that my time in Zaria was exhausted but whether I was going to go was it America was it UK US was it Abuja was it Lagos where and I knew that it was to wait to wait upon the Lord I remember then I came into Lagos from South Africa had a meeting and then I went to London briefly for a meeting as I returned back I went to Abuja and I was to rush to Zaria for a program when they declared COVID you know the lockdown the three months lockdown I was trapped there in Abuja and all I did I said well since I don't have anybody to preach to now let me not waste my time let me wait stayed in prayer and the Lord gave me an instruction he said to buy the map no 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 it was even when I I I'd found out I was praying I knew that the season in Zaria was over but where would be the next place I did not know I kept praying and praying and it looked like God you can imagine for someone who prophesies for people it's difficult to stay till you hear God because there is impatience when you are used to hearing God for others it's a difficult thing to wait and I stood there and one time I just saw a vision the map of Abuja and I said this is it and I began to pray and look what God has done today you see you can clap for a man but it was the fruit of waiting for someone all through the period of this conference make it a retreat make it a retreat shut down on a few things and say Lord you must speak to me in this season I'm tired of recycling seasons of pain for there is a way that cement right unto a man and the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of destruction many of you have tried all kinds of things believing it was God that spoke to you now the result is showing it was not God use this conference to fine-tune your hearing fine-tune your hearing fine-tune your hearing to wait upon the Lord means to wait until his word comes the prophetic word that becomes a compass helping you to navigate through the season you are about to enter number three what does it mean to wait upon the Lord who is learning tonight to wait upon the Lord means to stay until you evolve to a more superior version of you that can manifest the prophetic word on your life now listen we were discussing again with Pastor Shola while we were coming and I was telling him that there are many ways God answers prayers let me tell you three ways God answers prayers number one by supernatural manifestations like healings deliverances he can answer you instantly supernaturally number two God answers prayer by introducing the ministry of men to your life the ministry of men number three God answers prayers by causing you to grow into the version that he can bless because there are many things that we call prayer requests today that are only there because you have not grown it was never supposed to be a prayer request the the fact that you have it as a prayer request is proof to you that you have not grown to the version that can be trusted with that answer are we learning now so when you wait upon the Lord you stay there please listen this is a major component of waiting to wait until you mold like a reptile like a snake coming out of your former self into a more spiritual version a more consecrated version a more enlightened version to wait upon the Lord means to stay in his presence until that which becomes a limitation to your next level is broken the flesh the the encumbrances that tie you down the weights you stay in his presence until that circumcision happens don't forget what we're discussing that to wait upon the Lord number one is a spiritual orientation of total trust and dependence upon the Lord number two 
to wait upon the Lord means to stay until he speaks using his voice to give you direction for the next season number three to wait upon the Lord means to stay in his presence until his presence does something to you and evolves you to a more spiritual version a more powerful version a version of you with greater capacity to now be able to handle the weightier things that he wants to bring you into the Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differed not from a slave if that heir is a man of God no matter what kind of expectation you have God will restrict growth he will restrict results until growth is attained God will restrict results until growth is attained there are many restrictions that are not demonic it is the mercy of God he is stopping you from wasting your seasons so he keeps you until you grow who is learning so when the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord you understand what he's saying now they that have this consciousness that my entire life revolves around the help and the mercy of God that outside of his help and mercy I am what I am Paul says by the grace of God I am what I am by the grace of God it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but the Lord that showeth mercy are we together now haven't obtained help from the Lord I continue this way number two to wait upon the Lord means to wait for his word he gives you the prompting he gives you the matching order he gives you the direction he gives you the instruction for the next season contained within that instruction is the strategy for victory for the season you are about entering let me tell you this yesterday's formula may not give you today's victory just because you parted the Red Sea yesterday does not mean anytime you see a sea the solution is to part it there are times you will need to walk on water there are times God will give you a boat you anytime you stand before a sea don't assume that because you parted it yesterday it means every time you see a sea you will part it you may try to part it and drown this time around you have to wait for instructions per season and then number three to wait upon the Lord means to wait until his presence does something within you breaks that outer man breaks that flesh destroys all of those limitations that will frustrate your result tomorrow as a man of God you are trusting God to take you global you are trusting God to open up doors and God is saying there are tendencies of pride tendencies of lust tendencies of envy tendencies of jealousy so he says wait upon me when you wait there he cuts all of those things until you truly become spiritual then he can open the doors of nations so that you do not become a casualty and corrupt your testimony and the name of the Lord it is better for God to deal with you before you rise how many of you know that the higher you go the more impactful your fall when you are on the ground and you fall you may not enjoy yourself but when you are at the top of the building and you fall you may not even live to tell the story now let me wrap up by telling you three things you do while you are waiting there are three things you must do while you wait in his presence number one the first thing you do while you wait in his presence is that you must wait studying scripture studying scripture listen the light of God's word is what destroys darkness in any area the Bible says John 1 5 and the light shineth in the darkness when you wait upon the Lord and you are not engaging the Word of God you are not listening to the Word of God you are not opening yourself to the Word of God you are wasting that experience when you set aside a time to wait upon the Lord waiting upon the Lord means engaging scripture for in many many cases you will hear his voice through his word you will hear his voice through his word you will hear his voice through his word the Lord can appear to you by his word are we together what do I do while I'm waiting I engage the word I engage the word 
who has faced my kind of situation in the Bible, what did they do? What did they do? What did they do? I'm trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And while I am waiting for my answer, the Bible says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body, for I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. That means men, you see, I have taught this and perhaps some of you have heard me, that the various names you see in the Bible are not just names of individuals, but they are also spiritual pathways that produces a kind of believer. So when you hear the name Sarah, Sarah is not just the name of the wife of Abraham. Sarah is the name of a spiritual pathway that can lead to victory are we together now that when you are barren you can follow a spiritual pathway the way Sarah followed and at the end of it Genesis 21 and verse 1 becomes your own testimony the Bible says and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken When we wait, we wait with the word. Number two, what do you do while you wait? You engage in quality prayers. You invest in strategic prayers. Praying with all manner of prayers. Praying in the spirit. Prayers of thanksgiving. Prayers of warfare. Prayers of supplications. May I refer you to listen to my teaching as we wrap up? effective prayer dynamics effective prayer dynamics I show in that teaching the various kinds of prayers that the believer must engage all of them do not produce the same outcome there is the prayer of thanksgiving there is the prophetic declaration of scripture there is praying in tongues praying in the spirit there is engaging in warfare all of these have their outcomes when you are waiting you are permitted to engage every and all manner of prayer. In the place of waiting, warfare is allowed. In the place of waiting, thanksgiving as proof of faith is allowed. In the place of waiting, creating your reality by declaring scripture is allowed. In the place of waiting, praying in the spirit to edify yourself so that you are built into that fashion that can host the promises of God in experience. When we wait, we engage the light of God's word. We contend for enlightenment through the word as we wait. When we wait, we engage in prayer. We engage in prayer. And let me add prayer with fasting. When you are really waiting upon the Lord, you wait, you pray, and you fast. You pray and you fast. You pray and you fast. Hallelujah. What do we do while we wait? Are you ready? You engage the mystery of praise. You engage the mystery of praise. You engage the mystery of praise. I will call upon the Lord, the Bible says, who is worthy of praise. It says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Let the people praise thee, O God. Then shall the earth yield her increase. There is something about praise not just as a weapon of warfare but that you can program tomorrow by prayer while Paul and Silas were in the prison waiting for their deliverance the Bible says they prayed at midnight they prayed and they sang and all the jailers heard them let me tell you something about combining prayer and praise it was not everybody in the prison who was praying it was not everybody in the prison who was singing but when the answer came, everybody in the prison benefited from it. That means your family members may not join you while you are praying. They may not join you while you are praising. But the day God delivers a testimony, your children's children will benefit from it. It says at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed. And then they sang. And all the jailers heard them. At least they did not stop them. So they, they were cooperating with them in some way. The Bible says suddenly there was a great earthquake and the foundations of the prison was shaken. And immediately, I like this, all the doors were open. How many doors? How many doors? 
financial doors marital doors health doors career doors the bible says when god came all doors open all doors not some doors all doors open but that's not where i'm going please show me that scripture again all doors open read the remaining line and everyone's bands were losing everyone including those who were in the prison they didn't pray they didn't praise but they were in the atmosphere of those who were waiting can i tell you this no one may have risen in your family but now that you are the only one who knows god this much engage wait upon the lord carry this consciousness wait upon him as you engage the word wait upon him as you engage in prayer wait upon him as you engage in praise oh you are good oh lord you are good oh lord you are good oh lord but thou oh lord are a shield from me my glory you lift my head my sense is mighty anointed here but thou time is up but let me request that you let me five more minutes it's important that I do what I want to do now I want to show you four things I've given you three number one when you wait upon the Lord in his presence open up scripture and learn his ways you will hear his voice when the scrolls are opened number two engage in strategic prayers number three engage in praise with understanding now let me tell you the fourth thing you do while you are waiting and I hope you have the faith to believe engage the mystery of sacrifice the mystery of sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather my saints unto me he says they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice when you are waiting during those seasons you engage sacrifice of your time, sacrifice of your resources. I can tell you moments in my life where as I waited for seasons to open, God gave me instructions, sometimes very painful instructions. I know that most believers are not matured enough to even take this dimension, but there is a dimension where it is death that works with glory. There is a dimension where death has to walk in you so that life will walk in others. God can give you an instruction, can tell you sow a seed, not as manipulation with understanding. God does not need your money. What dies is not the seed. What dies is something in you so that life will come out. Abraham, I desire you to be a father of nations, but take thy son thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him as a bond offering let me tell you this anyone who engages this consistently is the man who will enjoy abundance of grace in your faith sojourn that when others plateau others mark time you should be a victim of it too but you know that they that wait upon the Lord, as you stay in his presence, you get some time alone, off ministration, off the face of people, and you are in his presence, engaging scripture. You are in his presence, praying. You are in his presence, fasting. You are in his presence, praising. And then you engage with a seed 
he says you have done well he opens up a new vista and like the eagles you mount up with wings and although you are human the kinds of results that come from your life from your ministry from your business these are results that only God can produce hallelujah so the way we obtain help from God is to stay in his presence engaging light from scripture stay in his presence in prayer stay in his presence giving him praise for who he is stay in his presence listening for his voice let me remind you again and then we'll pray that to wait is first a consciousness it's a mentality of total dependence void of looking up to self number two to wait means to stay until his voice comes to look unto Jesus until his voice comes you still remember because when his voice comes it opens up a new season for you number three to wait means to stay in his presence until you evolve don't forget this third one this is the major assignment of waiting to stay till you evolve because when you evolve there are many things you are looking at now as a miracle that will be a natural reality in that realm we are going to pray I want us to take a minute or so to pray you are going to be crying unto God that every destruction that a distraction that has cheated you that you have gassed out you are weary you've told everybody your problems except the one who can really help you you're going to obtain grace from God Lord I do not want to have a better yesterday I am like the eagle whose strength can be renewed I cry for strength the grace to wait someone go ahead and pray lift your voice passionately and sincerely the next one minute you are praying unto the God of all grace They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. The businessmen that wait upon the Lord. The pastors that wait upon the Lord. The career persons that wait upon the Lord. The elders, the children, the young men that wait upon the Lord. The students that wait upon the Lord. Go ahead and pray. I obtain grace to wait. I obtain grace to carry this consciousness that everything I have belongs to you. That there is no me without you in truth. to stay until he speaks to stay until his word comes grace to stay until you grow to stay studying the word to stay praying to stay praising to stay giving until you grow in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus glorious name we pray so the next time you see individuals by the wings of the Spirit soaring in ministry soaring in business soaring in every area of life you know the secret now it is not because we are sufficient in ourselves our sufficiencies of God but the key is to learn to wait and if I were you don't wait until you are weary wait as a lifestyle because sometimes when you are weary it becomes too late medical science teaches us that at the point you are thirsty your body would have been desiring water for a long time already so you don't wait until you are thirsty to drink water 
you take it as a discipline for health and vitality that's how it is in the spirit you don't wait until trouble sends you for a retreat you wait as a lifestyle that every week aside from your daily times with God you dedicate a time every month there is a time between you and his majesty and when people ask you why are you always in his presence you will tell them that is why you desire me in the first place the day I leave his presence then my relevance also dies let me pray for you I'm praying for two sets of people here tonight let me have your attention please I want to pray first for someone who is saying apostle listening to you it is very clear that I don't even believe in Jesus not to talk of waiting something has happened to me I have been in church all my life or I was invited to this conference but as it stands right now I sincerely cannot say I have a functional relationship with this Jesus the one who is not weary the one who gives power to those who are weak and increases strength to those who are without might I want to give someone an opportunity to make it right with Jesus now and for someone perhaps to rededicate your life you are saying I remember making this call before but as it is right now my life has gone haywire I cannot say that I have a functional relationship with Jesus these two groups of people I'm going to count one to five I just need one sincere person who is ready to stand in front here tonight not ashamed you are saying apostle I cannot hear this word that has come from the Lord through you I desire to know him so that I can wait upon a God who is not a stranger to me I'll count one to five leave your seat very quickly and come and stand here I begin my counting now let's encourage them as they come one God bless you God bless you my brother I see a few people coming God bless you please double up as you're coming abundant life can we celebrate them let's encourage them as they come God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you come God bless you he's able to give you a new beginning it doesn't matter how things have been you can start afresh with him today is the day of salvation three someone is finally winning this war over your destiny the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no way cast away God bless you my sister God bless you my brother we are a family of faith and while these ones are coming let me encourage someone who is following online here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life it is never too late to make it right with Jesus as I pray for these ones I want to encourage you to participate in the prayer young and old come four the final count and I begin to lead them to pray hallelujah amen brothers and sisters thank you very very much I want to appreciate you for making this noble decision let me ask that you lift your right hand if you can high above your head and say this sincerely mean it from your heart you're not reciting a poem please if you're joining them join them very quickly we're about to pray say after me as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am a child of God I go from glory to glory amen father thank you for this once the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come declaring your Lordship over their lives I declare by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven and I declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus bona fide recipients of the life of God grace to live a victorious Christian life I impart upon you right now you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name we pray amen and amen 
now ladies and gentlemen please do me a favor i'd like you to look to my left that will be your right there are counselors ready to receive you they'll have a word with you just very briefly and then you return to your seat let's honor them as they go let's honor them as they go hallelujah lift your hands and let me just speak over you standing upon the grace that is upon our mother and every servant of God in this place I want to speak over your life prophetic words are very powerful because they are able to program realities truly they work in the name that is above all names I pray for someone who is now at the end of a prophetic season and you are trusting God to step into the next season I come tonight as a prophetic midwife and I decree and declare that the door for the next season of your life the next season of your relevance may that door be open now may that door be open now may that door be open now in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says through wisdom a house is built by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing I speak over you the wisdom needed for the next season may my God who is also your God release that dimension of wisdom upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the human vessels who must show up in your life in this season to help make for your rising to help transit you to the place of prophecy wherever they are around Lagos wherever they are around Nigeria Africa and across the nations of the world by prophecy I declare that they gravitate towards your life they gravitate towards your life in the name of Jesus I speak to someone for your shame receive double 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 in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for someone whose prayer life has gone down you love the Lord but as he stands your prayer life has gone down the fire upon your altar has gone down in the name of Jesus we set the fire upon your altar back to flames back to flames the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to intercede receive it in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare everything threatening your appetite for the Word of God I decree and declare let a fresh hunger for the Word come upon you now a fresh hunger for the Word in Jesus name finally I want to pray for you your conference says next level next level is always a product of transitions in the spirit I want to pray for you every help you need from God whether it is favor whether it is honor whether it is restoration whether it is speed by all godly means whatever needs to be introduced to your life in this season to make this next level prophetic agenda true for you I agree with God and I agree with the woman of God that in the name of Jesus all of those graces may they be made available for you in this season may they be made available for you in this season the Bible says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency you will abound in all things I pray for you let sufficiency be made available for you in the name of Jesus Go forward in Jesus name go forward in Jesus name run through a troop in the name of Jesus leap over walls in the name of Jesus I bless you with the blessings of heaven and I pray for you that October November December will be for you like 10 years in three months I say it again that October November December will be for a believer like 10 years in three months in the name of Jesus Christ I want to thank you again for this opportunity 
and I declare that when next we'll see, it will truly be next levels for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.